but we're not done with the hypothalamus and pituitary yet. This video is about the hypothalamic pituitary organ axes. These all refer to the anterior pituitary. And by axis, it means a pathway basically with multiple steps. You've already actually seen this. Let's draw out the generic signaling from the hypothalamus to the anterior pituitary to organs, other endocrine organs, um, which then release a hormone. So this is what should look not like anything super new. Hypothalamus releases a releasing hormone. It also could release inhibiting hormones. We're gonna focus on the stimulant simulation, so releasing hormones. That releasing hormone is gonna target the anterior pituitary. This is that local portal system. The anterior pituitary is gonna release a hormone into circulation. So a true, right, hormone. This is a hormone too because it's going into the bloodstream. It's not a paracrine because it's going into the bloodstream. A paracrine is only relies on diffusion to contact local tissues right nearby. This is being actually shuttled in a tube. This is gonna be go to circulation to target some endocrine organ. The endocrine organ is gonna release hormone that's going to affect other target organs potentially. This organ also might do something. So we'll, we'll see some of that, like the um, ovaries and testes. So this is the anatomy that goes with that, should look familiar, releasing hormone here. This calls it hormone one, hormone two. I don't really care if this is hormone one, two, and three, or you call this hormone and hormone two. I don't care. You need to know what hormones are where, right? So this is the same idea here. So let's look at these pathways. Let's name the hormones and organs in these pathways. Let's do that here. So this is the pathways I'd like you to know once we put the information in. Um, so one is going to be called, I like to name them. Um, so HPT, that name has some meaning. So that's gonna be the hypothalamus pituitary thyroid axis. So we're gonna have um, TRH, thyrotropin releasing hormone, released from the hypothalamus, targets the release of thyroid stimulating hormone from the anterior pituitary. Here we're gonna name the endocrine gland that is targeted by TSH, the thyroid hormone. An endocrine organ is going to release T3 and T4 are the names of the thyroid hormones. Those are gonna affect metabolism. We'll get into that in a later video. This, um, a bit more of this. These are just the pathways. We'll actually go into the pathways in more detail, of course. Super cool. This one is HPA, so adrenal gland. This is part of the stress response. So you'll see tons out there. If you Google HPA, you'll probably get a lot more than Googling these other terms. Um, HPA function is implicated in all kinds of processes, all kinds of emotional states, anxiety, depression, um, all kinds of things. So HPA axis is gonna target, why don't we just write that in first, the adrenal gland hypothalamic pituitary adrenal gland. Um, and actually I'm gonna remind you up here, these are all anterior pituitary as listed right here. So uh, HPA axis is gonna start with corticotropin releasing hormone, which is going to trigger corticotropin release, adrenocorticotropin hormone, corticotropin releasing hormone. The names make some sense. I'm fine with you using abbreviations, but knowing the names, at least like 
now as, you, as you're studying using the names, the full names, helps it make sense. Releasing hormones are all from the hypothalamus. Stimulating hormones or corticotropins are from the pituitary typically, and then it's kind of a mixed bag after that. The adrenal gland is going to release cortisol. Stress hormone, we'll talk more about it, but you've probably heard of it um, related to the stress response. You also have heard of, well, okay, we'll come, I'll come back to that. Let's keep going. We've got um, growth hormone, releasing hormone. This I will talk less about. Um, gonna cause, of course, the release of growth hormone, which actually, I think I had this in a different video, it actually tr triggered, um, triggers the liver first. I'm not going to actually go into this. I'm going to say skeletal system, muscular, musculoskeletal. We're not going to do this one in more detail. Um, it does actually have the same pathway where the liver triggers these target cells, which are these. There's growth factors in between here. We're not going to do this one further, but I do it does fit growth hormone triggers, sorry, growth hormone releasing hormone triggers growth hormone to target the liver and then target cells. Same pathway fits. There is also growth hormone inhibiting hormone that exists. And that's actually um, somatostatin. <clears throat> so these are basically the ones that we are gonna care about the most. So far, then we've got GnRH. This one we're also going to care about because it triggers the release of gonadotropins. I'm going to write those gonadotropins out by their specific names here, luteinizing hormone and follicle-stimulating hormone. Those are both gonadotropins. So again, tropic hormones that are going to target the gonads ovaries and testes, the gonads are going to I'm sorry, release um, sex steroids, testosterone, estrogyl, progesterone. This one we'll come back to a little bit this week and then with reproduction next week again. You can't say Repetition doesn't help, it does. Um, I've got one more, what is it? Mm, I think I was just going to add in there. Let me make sure I'm not forgetting something else. CRH, TRH. Okay, I think the last one I have is one you also don't need to know. Um, it's dopamine, pretty cool. You know dopamine is actually going to inhibit prolactin. There are also prolactin releasing hormones, but or, so there's inhibiting or releasing hormones. Prolactin is actually going to target a non-endocrine organ, the breast tissue. So that's one where it kind of skips that same pathway. So the ones that are starred here are the three that we're gonna focus the most on and that fit best, best with that pathway. You'll see here is also negative feedback um, I mentioned before as well. So T3 will turn off TRH and TSH. Cortisol will turn off, inhibit CRH and ACTH, et cetera. That will be very important. This picture is a summary. I don't actually love it, 
but it has basically everything I just showed you with some of the anatomy, um, some of the specific targets. So you can use it to study. Um, do notice it also has these posterior pituitary hormones over here, oxytocin and ADH. It's got the um, adrenal medulla innervation over here. So this is everything the hypothalamus does, not really everything, but a lot. Um, and then these are going to be our three most important pathways. So CRH, ACTH, adrenal gland, T TRH, TSH, thyroid gland, thyroid hormones, and then GNRH, where are they? FSH and LH, this detail here we'll come back to. It's got a couple others that I either mentioned briefly or actually one that I did not mention here. So I would expect you to be able to draw out these three, those pathways and show the negative feedback related to those. One more thing I wanna say here is, so you should be able to tell me something about these hormones, many of them. So steroid hormones, both of these are steroid hormones. You know, those are gonna cause changes in gene expression. Thyroid hormones, you know, those are able to enter the cell and change gene expression as well. The rest of these, you don't necessarily know. Uh, oh, actually, sorry, you know, oxytocin and ADH, you know, those are peptide hormones that are gonna bind to G protein coupled receptors. Most of the other hormones here, the releasing hormones and the ones released from the um, anterior pituitary as well, most of them are peptide hormones. So let's do a learning check here. Fill out this table with the releasing hormones from the hypothalamus. Let's say just do the, let's say just do the main three. I'll get you started here, CRH, TRH, and GNRH.